This is Rise of Civilization, Part 4, on Ancient Egypt, and this would be the last slide of the Egypt lecture. So we know that the ancient Egyptians were polytheistic, meaning they had many gods. And they had many gods and goddesses. So uh, you could look at this yourself. This just shows you um, Amun Ra, the sun god, head of a falcon and a sun. Osiris wears the white crown of Upper Egypt, usually. Isis, protector of children. Horus, the falcon god. So there you have the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. Anubis, the god of embalming. Hathor, kind of the cow god. Mayat. So Mayat is that concept, but it's also um, represents a woman with a feather in her hair. And you're going to see when, when you die, you're, you are taken up to the afterlife and your heart is weighed against her feather. Sobek, head of a crocodile, the god of water. Set, not really sure what animal that is. Mayat, that's the goddess of truth and order. So basically, when you died, kind of like if you're Christian or Catholic, if you go to the pearly gates, and they're going to look at 42 admonitions, and they're going to judge your soul, and they're going to take your heart and, wear it against a and weigh it against a feather. And if it's l as light as a feather, you'll be led into the afterlife. If not, you're in trouble. So here are some of the admonitions. I've not done inequity. I've not done murder. I've done no harm. I've done no harm. So what do these sound like? They kind of sound like the Ten Commandments. So basically, you know, the same thing. Lead a good life. Do the right thing. And we can't forget Bestet, who's the cat goddess. More pictures of kitties. Thousands of years ago, cats were worshipped as gods, and they haven't forgotten this. Other sacred symbols. The scarab, very ancient symbol, the beetle. The ankh, the symbol of life. The Egyptian Book of the Dead had all these vignettes and illustrations to help you go through the dangers of the underworld. Taxes, believe it or not, Egyptians had to pay 15 to 20 percent of their harvest to the government as, ta as a tax. And we know that the Old Kingdom lasted for six dynasties, but then what we think happened is that the Nile stopped flooding. And when the Nile stopped flooding, it created all kinds of hardships and created problems for the Pharaoh because everybody blamed him. So then you had the Middle Kingdom, and I'm giving you a very oversimplified version here. But you had splintering into dozens of independent states, and eventually the government was kind of decentralized. And in order to get more taxes, they let more foreigners in. Because don't forget, they didn't like foreigners very well. And then you had the sixth, or excuse me, the second intermediate, and this is when Egypt was actually run by foreigners. And this was really embarrassing to the Egyptians. And these were called the Hyksos, and they used iron weapons and horse-drawn chariots to conquer Egypt. They enslaved the Egyptians, and they ruled as pharaohs taking Egyptian names and invited even more foreigners in to collect taxes. So, and then we come to the New Kingdom. Now this is when the Egyptians took back control, but this, is, this was a real game change because 
they stopped building pyramids and everything moved down to Luxor or Thebes. And what they did was they started burying, burying the pharaohs in the Valley of the Kings. So here you have the Valley of the Kings with the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. Here's the famous temple of Abu Simbel. So again, the burials all were put into the rock face in the Valley of the Kings. And the tombs were cut into the rock and the walls were painted with all kinds of murals. I mean, it's really awesome when you go there. So here's what the Valley of the Kings looks like from the air. And during this time, you have Akhenaten. Now, Akhenaten, I'm gonna, one of the groups is going to talk about him, but um, he decided he's going to do away with all the gods and just have one god, the sun god, who he named Aten after himself. He is King Tut's father. This was just confirmed via DNA recently. His wife was Nefertiti. And the interesting thing about him is because he did away with all the gods and goddesses, people hated him. And they did away with all his imagery um, after he died. And so from what was left, it really looks like he was a hermaphrodite, but we're not sure. Don't forget all that divine incest was going on. So here's another depiction of him. Here's Nefertiti. She is thought to be one of the most beautiful women in all of Egypt. And they never found her mummy. This is one that they thought might be hers. And there she is. And then we have King Tut, discovered by Howard Carter in 1922. The big thing about King Tut was that up until Carter, they thought that they had found all of the pharaohs in the Valley of the Kings. And Carter thought that there was one more. And as a result, he got a British lord. Uh, How Carter was actually American and a um, British lord sponsored his excavations. And on the eighth year, in the last year that they were going to discover, I mean, that they were going to give up, Carter, a worker, found the entrance to the tomb. Here's King Tut's death, death mask. And here's some of the treasures. If you get the chance, it's totally awesome. Here's a picture of Howard Carter. And here are all the, the Pharaoh's tombs in the Valley of the Kings. So there's many, many of them buried there. This is what some of the openings are like. So then you have the end of the New Kingdom. The power of Egypt was weakened, and the overseas empires lost. And then you had the Ptolemaic period and the Roman period. Um, Cleopatra is thought to be the last of the pharaohs, and eventually Caesar brought Egypt under the control of Rome. And so these are my pictures um, from when I was there. So you can see Cairo is a very, very large, kind of polluted city, very poor. Um, like I said, I was there in the late 70s. So, um, you know, I mean, I think it's changed, but it really hasn't changed. Here's a p I took my slides and I scanned them. So on the left is a picture of my father who is a comedian so and you you get to ride camels up to the pyramids so here you can see i mean these are the pyramids of giza and it's more commercialized than you would think and um, at night though they have these light shows where um, they'll have the pharaohs talking and they have them in different languages um, because people come from all over the world but you do get a camel ride 
And here am I um, on my way to go to the pyramids via camel. So again, I was the youngest person in the tour. There I am. So you can see um, there are oh, pretty much hotels right across from the pyramids, but it's still great to go. Um, part of the tour was Egypt, Israel, and Jordan. So this is actually in Petra, Jordan. I am a horse rider. So um, at the time, the only way you could get in was either by walking or by horseback. And the picture on the left is actually from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, where they come riding out between the rocks there. So Petra is a rose city that the Romans carved into the rocks. It was really interesting. And then here again is the Valley of the Kings and the Temple of Queen Hashishput. And this is the end.